Immersed Robot. Hello everyone, welcome to Immersed Robot. So just a bit of a casual video today. Um, I'm just trying Elite Dangerous again now we've had update 7. I wanted to take a look at it. I know there's not been any major um, update in terms of performance and stuff. They do mention a little bit in the release notes for this latest update about performance, but I think they mentioned that in update 8 there might be a few more significant performance improvements. So I'm not really testing performance or anything, but I am still steadily making my way over to Colonia. Um, but I'm also testing the Air Link um, in my Oculus Quest 2 again because, of course, version 33 of the Oculus Quest software had a sharpening. Um, sort of a sharpening uh, filter that you can add on now um, and it's supposed to make things a lot better and I've got to say that having gone in it does look better now I've not done like a direct A to B comparison or anything like that so I've not tried it um, going without any sharpening filter and then going in with the sharpening filter or anything but from when I last played with Airlink things do look a lot better and it's getting very close to my index experience now um, there's a few caveats with that of course um, but just before I get into that just as I compare the two um, I am trying a new microphone today it's just one that I had lying around but I didn't I wasn't really happy with the way the Quest 2 microphone works so I'm trying a new microphone if it sounds a bit odd or if the audio isn't great then I apologize and I will try um, to rectify that for next time but if you can bear with me hopefully the audio isn't too bad and we can still use it anyway um, but yes yeah, so I'm still steadily making my way to Colonia while I test this but when I first went in and tried the sharpening um, I wasn't overly impressed but then I went into Elite Dangerous settings and because of multiple factors really I was able to ramp up the in-game super sampling and uh, the um, the HMD quality as well um, and that made things a lot better performance it still feels great you know even though I'm not doing a direct uh, performance test in this video um, it still feels performance feels great I'm not noticing any as you know a slight bit of reprojection when I move my head this is how I sort of test it in uh, Elite Dangerous if I look at the the uh, joystick there um, and then move my head over to the other side you can sometimes see some reprojection artifacts and there are a few actually but in this game because you're mainly using sort of rotational head movements and things and you're out in in space a lot of the time you don't notice it too much it's only when you're in stations or when you are landing on planets and things like that really um, but yeah so there is a little bit of that but it looks really good it looks very close to the index the reason I you know, I still prefer the index overall, and that's really because you don't have any video encoding or anything like that that will sort of distort, not really distort the image, but give it a kind of muddy look, um, like a slightly blurry look. So this sharpening thing does help with the Quest 2 now. Um, there is still, it's not as sharp as the index, of course, but it's very, very close. Um, and of course, with the, with the uh, Quest 2, you don't get any god rays or glare well you do but not as much as the the index the index in in terms of glare is really really poor um, and it does affect me quite badly in some experiences elite dangerous isn't always the worst to be honest but it's it's not great either so if you can play in a headset which do, has less glare or, or lower glare at least then it can make the difference especially in sections like this where i'm right next to a star fuel scooping and you might see a little bit of glare usually uh, off the instr instrumentation and off the sun itself um, but this is this is great there's not a lot of glare at all the image looks nice and sharp but then the other disadvantage of the Quest 2 with regards to when comparing to the Valve Index is the lower field of view so that's an, another aspect really why I still prefer the index overall but if I didn't already own an index and this was, you know, how I had to play Elite Dangerous in my Quest 2, this is an incredibly good experience for what you're getting with this headset and Airlink, no wires. Latency isn't a problem in this game at all. Like rotational head movement latency isn't there. There is no latency with that. 
um, you will notice it in some titles with the controllers and stuff if you've got hand presence in games you will notice a little bit of latency there but here there's not a lot at all it's looking really good I am actually tempted just to play quite a bit of Elite Dangerous like this um, which is you know you're, you're comparing two completely different headsets here but this sharpening in version 33 of the Oculus Quest update has uh, definitely definitely improved things as I mentioned I've not done a direct A to B, a to B comparison or anything um, with and without sharpening but I can I can tell it might be a placebo maybe it's a placebo I, I don't think it is because I do not remember it looking this good oh the other thing to mention though the colors are not as good in the quest 2 so that's something else to mention if that's particularly important to you the the general colors are a little bit washed out in air link I'm not too sure in the wide link if that's the same case or not um, I really don't use wide link at all um, it's all air link and I do use that quite a lot just not usually when I'm, I'm sat next to my PC where I always am because the HOTAS is next to my PC when I play Elite Dangerous this is really a Valve Index game for me Let's just get a little bit of fuel here so as I mentioned this is just a, a little bit of a casual video um, just playing a little bit of Elite but I was going to mention as well a couple of the things that are breaking in terms of news this past week. Um, so there's a couple of things. I mean, the big one to mention is probably the Quest Pro and the Quest 2 Plus, which um, there's been various leaks that have come out and uh, we've seen a little bit more details on, on these headsets. I mean, I, I wasn't aware and I'm not sure anybody was aware of a potential Quest 2 Plus or anything like that at this stage. The Quest Pro has been long rumoured. Um, but we are getting a few more details. Now the Quest Pro, I won't go through every, every detail or anything. I've not got any notes in front of me to remember every spec. But one of the things that I did find interesting um, was some of those photos where there was like a, a webcam uh, discussion between two people and this was posted on Reddit um, by a Reddit user who also posted a, a post a few days earlier regarding a dream they had about the Quest 2 features. And of course this was a way of him or her um, disclosing a few of the potential features for Quest Pro I presume due to some kind of insider information that they have. They went through quite a lot of specs in there, uh, resolution of the screen which is obviously increased, um, eye tracking, face tracking, many other things. Um, again I won't go through everything, there are multiple sources on that. In fact I'll direct you towards sadly it's Bradley's channel, um, he does a great breakdown of it. But also um, I did see Upload VR's podcast, uh, the VR download, just yesterday actually as I'm recording this video and Heaney on there did a, a nice breakdown of the uh, the leaks there too. But anyway, after this um, Reddit post that they they did, um, this user posted where they sort of gave away some of the specs for the Quest 2, uh, Quest Pro, sorry. They then posted something else uh, a day later or, or a couple of days later where it was a picture of a webcam feed that was a screenshot from it where there were these two controllers um, or two pictures of, of a, a controller presumably this was supposed to be a, a Quest Pro controller and it looked like the the Oculus Touch controllers but there was no tracking ring and it had integrated cameras so the tracking is all done by these cameras um, and there were further things around this where it looks like there was a a laser pattern that might be emitted from the headset um, similar to how Kinect works a, a laser pattern that, that goes out over the room creating some kind of like starlight pattern around the room in infrared and then these cameras are able to pick up on this and track based on the relative positions of those uh, those those points of light really um, 
So this is very interesting stuff because of course that would mean, hopefully, improved tracking for the controllers if they go out of line of sight of the cameras on the headset itself it wouldn't matter because they've got their own cameras which will be able to uh, track behind your back now there are questions around that i know um, depending on the position of the the uh, laser emitter the the point light emitter on the headset that only emits light out the front of the headset it might have issues but you know these are all questions that are up in the air and i don't want to get too in depth about all of that or anything at this moment because these are all just rumors and leaks but anyway, it, it points to a different kind of tracking and hopefully improved tracking. Um, so that's uh, an interesting thing, which um, is always beneficial, especially on a, a standalone headset where certain titles are very sort of limited because of the tracking, the inside out tracking from the headset to the controllers. But anyway, that's really what came out. And then we have this other thing about the, the Quest 2 Plus, which um, I've not read too much about it, but I think it's basically more or less supposed to be very similar to a current Quest 2, um, but with slightly different screens, where it uses this sort of dual LCD kind of, um, I don't know how people have, have been putting this actually, I should have researched this a little bit more, but it's basically one LCD in front of the other, and uh, the end result of this, this methodology of doing of setting these things up in this way um, where one controls the colors and then the other controls the um, black uh, black levels um, on the LCD display at the back um, by turning on and off pixels as required uh, based on the image uh, you basically the end result is, is better blacks closer to an OLED kind of display and um, so that's interesting I'm not sure if I would probably uh, really go for that if um, that's all it was. There might be other things we're not too sure at this stage. So we'll have to wait, really, I'm guessing some of this stuff might be at least hinted at at Facebook Connect on October the 28th, but we'll wait and see on that. So the other thing I wanted to just touch on in this video quickly is the uh, reports of a standalone Valve Index, Valve Index 2, possibly launching next year. Now, this goes back once again to sadly it's Bradley's channel, um, who is, I'm not saying it's, it's going back to his channel sadly, I'm saying his channel's name is sadly it's Bradley. And um, he's doing some incredible work at the moment, really diving in deep into these patents and into um, the firmware files as well um, and software files for Steam VR and um, I'm really diving in and getting a lot of information out there um, I think he's got a little bit of help as well now from his community members as well that are helping him out really discover some interesting things and some of the things are really pointing towards a standalone Valve Index now I've always been a little bit skeptical of this um, mainly because I don't see a standalone headset, even if it's more powerful than the Steam Deck, um, I don't see a standalone headset being able to run Steam VR titles natively. And this is something I've mentioned on the Next Dimension podcast when I've been on that, and also something that I mentioned recently on the VR Roundtable reunion show we had on Sunday. Now, I am of the op opinion that if it's a standalone headset, um, even if it's got other functionality where it can be connected to a PC, if it's if it's got standalone functionality, true standalone functionality, then I sort of feel like it it has to have its own Steam VR library, and that's something which I really don't see Valve doing necessarily because the software would need certain optimizations from developers in order to uh, run a lot of the software natively on that headset, and. Um, so I, I almost feel like there's a piece to the jigsaw missing at this stage. Now I'm not contradicting anything that, that Bradley has um, found out in those patents or in the uh, Steam VR files or anything like that. Um, I'm just, uh, I think there's a level of interpretation here as well that we could probably talk about. Um, but his latest video is very interesting. He does go into how it points directly to a, a standalone headset. And um, I was always of the opinion that 
perhaps it has onboard process and I'm almost certain it does have onboard processing for split rendering um, to be connected to a PC, have extra functionality possibly to help with uh, the wireless um, capabilities of that headset and also do some software processing to help with the, the rendering of things like motion smoothing and stuff like that. Um, but to get a standalone PC in a VR headset capable of running native Steam VR titles, if they can do it then I'll be first in line and I think it will sell really well. I just think it's a, it's a tough ask in 2022. Now that could be the long term plan going forward. One thing I will say about these patents as well, they don't necessarily all point to the next index. It could be you know, several generations of indexes that they are pointing to, so that's something to mention as well. Um, but nevertheless, you know, I do recommend you go and check out Sadly It's Bradley's channel and, um, you know, dive into some of his videos. There's a lot of analysis there, very interesting stuff. And, um, you know, he explains it really well as well. So there's, there's a lot to um, note on that. But um, I think there's still also a lot of questions to ask about really... What, what Valve have planned both next year and also going forward. Um, so we'll, we'll see really, you know, I've got plenty of thoughts on it, but um, this, the information is just a little bit sparse at the moment and it points in, in various directions, I feel, as well. But nevertheless, interesting stuff, so do check that out. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I just wanted to, it looks like I've arrived somewhere where I can land at least finally. So um, I'll carry on this trip to Colonia and I will just reiterate, I'm really impressed with um, this uh, sharpening filter um, addition to the Quest. Oh, just getting interdicted at this final moment. Um, but yeah, the sharpening thing really is helping in this game in Quest 2. Air Link is a fantastic way to play this game. I highly recommend it. Perhaps still the Valve Index will be the, my headset of choice to play this game. But um, yeah, this is, this is still a fantastic way to play. And yeah, I'm very tempted, I'm very tempted to just uh, <laughs> continue playing a little bit in the, uh, in the Quest 2. But anyway, once again, a casual video um, this time. I just wanted to play a little bit of Elite Dangerous while talking about various topics and test out this mic that I found in a, in a drawer. So hopefully the audio isn't too bad, but if it is, I apologise and I will try to rectify that for my next video of this type. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Please consider picking up my science fiction virtual reality focused novel, The Memory Engine, a light-hearted tongue-in-cheek adventure through the metaverse, available on Amazon Kindle, paperback, and as an audible audiobook. Links in the description to this video.